Hey, 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 it's Triple A Wednesday, which stands for Ask Alyssa Anything. And this is my weekly Q&A session where I'm responding to questions you've left in the comments about the publishing industry and how to write a better book. These sessions are just a small way for me to give back to my amazing community of subscribers. And if you're new here and haven't yet joined us, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Every week, in addition to these Q&A sessions, I publish a video either with a deep dive into an aspect of the publishing industry, or I talk about tactical ways to improve your manuscript. So if you're a writer with a work in progress, it's a great place to be and an amazing community, as I said. One more thing before we dive into the questions today, if you could just hit that thumbs up button down below, it really does help my channel reach more authors just like you, and I would really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's dive into the first question today. Do agents take into consideration a prospective author's social media platform as much or possibly more than the story slash query submitted? I ask this because I know of an author who doesn't have much of a social platform, but have been told that agents want to know all of their social media platforms and subscribers to each. Maybe so they don't have to do as much marketing that they once used to. Social media following is a common source of anxiety among many authors who are seeking traditional publishing. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I promise you that it is absolutely possible to get a literary agent and get a book deal with a major publishing house without a major social following. There are rumors that surface in the writing community every so often saying that literary agents aren't gonna consider any author that doesn't have a huge social platform and publishers aren't gonna be interested in publishing anyone without a social platform, and it is simply not true. What is true is that having a platform of some kind can only help you on your publishing journey because of course you have a built-in following of people to market your book to. Of course, that's going to be appealing to a literary agent or a publisher, but it is not a requirement. And at the end of the day, what is going to attract a literary agent and publisher is the strength of your story first and foremost. A significant social following can be the icing on the cake, but it is not the primary thing that an agent is considering. Now, if you are querying nonfiction, then having a platform of some kind does become a bit more important but for fiction, some authors have one, other authors don't. It is possible that when you're filling out an agent's query form or you're reading their instructions, they ask for your social handles and following just to have that information. They likely also just wanna check out your social media platforms to get to know you as a person and author a bit better, but don't be afraid to just put the truth on there. It's not like they're looking for a certain amount and then they're immediately going to delete your query if you don't reach a minimum following. I promise you, that's not what any reputable agent is doing. They just want to have that information so they have a full picture of who you are and your project. Before we get into the next question, I wanted to let you know about a free resource I created specifically for my YouTube community. It is called my Story Self-Assessment Worksheet. And if you're finding yourself stuck with your draft where it stands, it's a fun, easy quiz designed to help you understand what you can do with the story from here. Areas you could improve to take it to the next level. I know that can be so hard to see in your own work. Downloading that resource is going to sign you up for my newsletter where I publish exclusive interviews with publishing industry insiders and successfully published authors. And I've been getting some amazing feedback on the newsletter that you all are enjoying the tips. So I don't want you to miss out on all of that great stuff. If you wanna go straight to the newsletter, it's called Chapter Break and the link is in the description. Here's the next question. I was wondering about your thoughts on the recent Simon & Schuster sale. What does that mean for us authors, do you think? I really appreciate you bringing up the Simon & Schuster sale because it's something I haven't talked about yet on my channel, so this is the perfect opportunity to do so. I've covered on my channel the attempted merger between Penguin Random House, the largest big five publisher in the US, and Simon & Schuster. Penguin Random House attempted to purchase Simon & Schuster to really take the big five publishing houses to the big four, but the merger was blocked by the Department of Justice because of antitrust concerns. So the parent company of Simon & Schuster, which is Paramount, went back to the drawing board and accepted other bids and went into other negotiations with different companies who were interested in purchasing Simon & Schuster. It was announced in August that the private equity firm KKR purchased Simon & Schuster from Paramount. 
So far, what they have said that they intend to do is have Simon & Schuster continue to operate as one of the big five publishing houses as its own independent company. The current CEO is supposed to still be heading the company. And like any business, they, of course, want to expand it and make it more profitable. That is what a private equity firm is trying to do in acquiring businesses. As far as how professionals in the industry are responding, it's too soon to say how this acquisition is going to shake out and how it's going to change Simon & Schuster. I'm sure that it's going to change it in one way or another. And there have been some peeps of concern, primarily that KKR is a private equity firm and private equity firms are very concerned with the bottom line of all of the businesses that they own. In KKR's case, they own billions of dollars worth of businesses and to them, Simon & Schuster is almost a drop in the bucket of all of the assets that they own. So some people are concerned that they're really only going to be looking at the numbers. And if Simon & Schuster doesn't fit into the expectations they have for their investment portfolio, they could do things to the business that maybe hurt the employees or hurt the authors or hurt the books that are being published in the interest of the bottom line. I haven't heard of any specific examples of that happening so far, but it is something to watch out for. That said, the big five publishing houses are all treated as corporations and the people at the top of all of them are very concerned with profits and the bottom line. So I'm not sure that KKR as an owner is gonna be any different from anyone else being an owner, but it is interesting to see that Simon & Schuster is now owned by a company that isn't at its heart in the publishing industry. Let me know in the comments if you've heard anything about the acquisition and what you think. I'd be curious to know. We have time for one more question today. I have finished the first few drafts of my novel and have sent it to a developmental editor for an editorial assessment. Hopefully the assessment will give me lots of feedback and points of improvement. My question is when I have addressed all the suggested improvements and the manuscript is ready for the next stage, what should that stage be? I know that this is usually a copy edit, but how do I know the potentially large changes I have made are good enough? Should I do a second round of developmental assessment or perhaps beta reads? Do dev editors even offer second round assessments? Developmental editing is not necessarily a one and done process. Oftentimes you're reworking such large portions of the manuscript, such major elements of the story that it really does require several rounds of developmental work before all those elements of the story are truly gelling. It's not as straightforward as a copy edit or a line edit where you're fixing all the things that need to be fixed and it's good to go. It can be hard to see if those issues that your developmental editor pointed out have been addressed. So I would encourage you to take time to go through multiple rounds of developmental work if the manuscript is requiring that. And if there were really substantial changes you made based on the assessment that you got. Personally, I do often work with my clients through multiple rounds of developmental editing, whether that is a second editorial assessment where I'm evaluating the effectiveness of their revisions in addressing all of the feedback, or sometimes we move on to a developmental edit where I am providing inline comments in the manuscript itself, helping them improve the flow of the scenes and making sure every single scene is doing the work it needs to do. I would say this is something you should discuss with your developmental editor after you receive their feedback and you've implemented the changes. How are you feeling about the manuscript at this point? To you, does it feel strong enough? Does it feel like you're very confident in where the story stands? In which case, maybe you can go into a line or copy edit. Particularly if you're intending to self-publish, that would be a step you have to take. But if you're just not sure that those changes are actually going in the direction that you need them to and doing the work you need them to. Speak to your developmental editor about potentially doing another pass of edits, or you can absolutely get feedback from another source, whether that's a critique partner or a beta reader. Think of developmental editing as a iterative process. It's hard to know when you're done and you can keep going for a while, but listen to how you're feeling about the story. If there's still areas that you're unsure of or you know that they could still use some work, that would indicate that maybe another round of developmental edits would be helpful. That's all we had time for today. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question. If you have something you'd like to ask me, drop it in the comments here and it will be added to my queue for the next video. Before you head out, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It does help out my channel a lot. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And don't forget your free story self-assessment worksheet and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.